Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join this session. Um, it's been a whirlwind couple of weeks for me at Auth0, but super excited to join security and really excited about um, our sponsorship of this event because what we're doing here is super, super important um, as we move the needle as women in security. And so today, um, what I wanted to just, I just wanted to take some time to pop in and talk and talk about a little bit about my journey and give some, um, some thoughts and some um, commentary on um, what it's been like the past couple of years as a woman um, in cybersecurity and um, kind of give you, I get asked a lot of the same questions um, over and over again. So this is a great forum to really talk through, hey, what did that career path look like? What did I do and kind of what inspires and motivates me? And hopefully you will also take some time to learn about Auth0 it's a phenomenal company. If you hasn't, haven't had the chance to visit our booth, please stop by. Um, our team is there chatting with folks, but also having some great live sessions as well. So today I'm actually gonna talk to you about um, a little bit of a philosophy that I have um, developed over the past 20 or so plus years around my leadership journey. And it is, it is entitled lead, lead, not leave, uh, don't leave, stay. Um, but it is entitled lead. And, and the reason that I entitled it lead is because sometimes lead means different things to uh, different people. And so, you know, throughout my career journey, there have been times when lead meant, you know, one thing or another. But in, in, in the context of today, um, lead stands for listen, establish, um, authenticity and dream big. And I'm going to break that down for you a little bit because I think one of the things that happened throughout the scope of my career is really there were days when I wanted to quit. There were days when I thought maybe I wasn't good enough or I didn't have what it took to make it um, as a cyber professional or as a, as a woman engineer. And so um, today in the context of this conversation, lead is listen, establish, authenticity and dream big. So I'm just gonna dive right into it. When I say listen, I mean, listen to yourself, listen to your gut. One of the things I learned very early on about myself is I have a tendency to dig my heels in. Um, there's a problem, I can solve it. Uh, there's a challenge, I can, you know, I can get through the challenge, I can break down a barrier. But as I've gotten further in my career, and I think wisdom of the ages is a tremendous gift, um, I, I understand that I can save the world or I can save myself. And potentially you might be able to do both of those things. But you can't save the world without saving yourself. It's like being on an airline and you put the mask on yourself, you put the oxygen on yourself first, and then you put the oxygen on the people around you. That's what this really means. Listen, you know, listen to your gut, save, save the world or save yourself means put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Um, there have been times, I think, in many of our careers where it was just really, really challenging. Maybe the environment wasn't a good fit for you. Maybe um, you had a boss that, you know, you weren't really in sync or in synergy with them. I have been there myself many times. And initially, I kind of thought I will make all these adjustments and little tweaks to myself to kind of make myself more palatable. And eventually I learned that that really doesn't work. Um, ultimately, it's better to find a, a, a space and a place that you feel good in uh, versus trying to fit yourself. If you're a circle, you're a circle, you're a square. So I think that, you know, that's kind of the context of that. Listen to your gut, save yourself. And here's the thing, you know, job hunting is tremendously difficult. Changing tracks or changing paths in your career, it's tremendously difficult. So I say that in the scope of sometimes it takes time also to really understand what listen to your gut and what that means. Sometimes it takes for us to get into quiet spaces or to just do nothing for a little while while we understand what that really looks like. And so that's kind of the, the listen to your gut. The second uh, kind of theory that I have for myself is establish a support system. And one of the things about being a woman in cybersecurity is that that support system may not always happen at work. I am really, really incredibly fortunate to work with a phenomenal group of both men and women um, at Auth0. But I think there have been times when I was the only woman, um, when I was the only black woman, when I was the only veteran, when I was the only. And so that's really a lonely space at work sometimes. And so one of the things that I did a few years ago 
I went to a phenomenal women's conference for women in privacy and cybersecurity, and they had invited uh, an author to speak. And um, her name was Pamela Reichman, and she wrote this book called The Stiletto Network, which has become one of my favorite um, books and also one of my favorite things to talk about, not in necessarily in the context of the book, but in the context of how the book um, really shaped my life. And what I realized is that um, it's super important that you establish a support system that fits you. I call my support system my tribe. Um, I have a huge tribe of people within the scope of, of what I do professionally, but also folks who are outside of the scope of what I do professionally who support me. Um, and our, our group um, that I, I have established is it's a group of five women. Um, they are all either engineers um, or uh, scientists or technologists um, throughout various fields. Um, they have inspired me and motivated me, guided me, um, in some cases helped uh, reel me in um, and just really helped me understand how far I could truly go. Um, I absolutely wouldn't be uh, where I am today without that support system. Of course, I have a really phenomenal big sister as well um, who happens to be a teacher. And so, you know, I'm constantly touching base with them and checking with them to see, um, you know, hey, have an idea about something. Hey, do you, you know, what do you think about this article that I'm writing? But also to pour into them and to their lives and careers as well. And so, you know, in, in, the, in the scope of establish your support system, you know, we we are a part of these these teams and these tribes that we build and these teams and tribes really can help keep us centered and can help us keep us focused and so one of the I think it's not even a, a secret, you know, you'll you'll see me walking around uh, with my friends if you see me at any conference and that's really my tribe and you know you think that you know as you get to a certain level that maybe um, You'll, you'll always feel really confident or you'll always be super happy um, about what you're doing. But I will tell you, there are always times when I am also unsure of myself and my tribe makes sure, make sure, makes sure that I know um, that there is really nothing that can stop me in this world. And they help keep me going. They recommend articles for me to read. They welcome recommend books for me to read. And, um, and so that's kind of the scope of establish your tribe. Your tribe can be whatever you think it should look like. It can be your colleagues at work. It can be your friends. It can be your family members. But ultimately, the goal of the tribe is to uplift. And so I think as women um, in cybersecurity and in technology as a whole, it is, it is an incredibly lonely industry. And I think that building that tribe has really helped um, round me out um, in a way that I, I am so, so grateful for. So we've got, you know, two things through lead so far. The first one is listen to your gut. Um, the second one is establish your support system. The, the third one is authenticity. And it has been, authenticity has been a journey for me. Um, you know, there, there are many things that we are and there are many things that we believe that we are. And I think one of the things that I am first and foremost is a black woman. That's what people see every day uh, when they see me. Um, they they see a black woman. And so, you know, I spent a lot of years trying to figure out how to make myself more palatable, I think, for uh, for the masses. And so I had to really find um, a space where I could be my whole self. Um, and one of the reasons that I landed at Auth0 and um, as I go through different um, interviews talking about the role, my role as CISO at Auth0, one of the things I said about Auth0 is that as I was going through the, um, the interview process, it was really pretty spectacular. Um, and I never thought I would say that about an interview process, but it was a spectacular process because it wasn't just an interview. It was a conversation in which and the team at Auth0 was getting to know me, and I also was getting to know them. And there were a lot of conversations about uh, what I, I thought I would bring to the table um, as the CISO. And of course, I've been technical for many, many years, and I'll talk a little bit about my career journey um, as we get to the end of the talk. But ultimately, um, I got the chance to to meet everybody on the team. And one of the things that, that was riveting for me right away is that it, folks were showing up as, as, as they are. Um, and that was interesting um, because I think we all want to do the best that we can in interviews. And it goes both ways. It's not just, you know, you showing up 
your best. It's it, everyone's kind of showing up on their best behavior. And we all kind of know that, you know, once you start a new job, it's it's kind of like they bring that little secret black book out like, hey, interview. But now here's the real deal. Well, what I found at Auth Zero is that I got the real deal uh, during the interview process, which has made my first couple of weeks really, really incredible as the CISO. My ultimate goal was is, is to lead um, a more holistic approach to security. So we're looking at not only technology, but we're looking at emotional intelligence. We're looking at social um, issues that impact technology and impact cybersecurity. And so really wanted to be focused on that. And so when we talk about authenticity, I think it's not just authenticity of ourselves, but authenticity of the places that we work for. Ultimately, I found that in myself and also in the folks that I work with and that work for me, um, me being authentic is the first step to them being authentic. And when people can show up to work as themselves, they inspire, you inspire a level of brilliance in them. And I understand that, you know, saying, sitting, sitting as a CISO, sitting as a, as you know, one of the top officers in my company and sitting as a CISO and saying to you, be authentic um, is hard. And I will tell you, it was a hard, it was a difficult journey for me as well. But ultimately, as I moved through the scope of my 20 some odd year career, I understood that I did my best work when I was just real. And one of the things that I like to say about, about being real is that I'll, I keep it 190% of the time. And I really, really believe that because I think that there are times that you do have to understand, hey, there's a time and place and space for, for things and for commentary and for, um, for us to be honest. And so um, really having a high level of emotional intelligence, I think, guides, um, guides us in the ways in which we are authentic. And so that was one of the things that was super important to me. As I grew in my career and things progressed further and further, I came to understand that the more authentic I was, the better work that I was able to do. And so, you know, find your voice. The real you is really, truly the best you. And as, you know, as I sit on hiring panels and as I, as we watch people come through the, the talent pipeline um, and you see those folks who are really, really shining so brightly, one of the things that I realize that they all have in common is that they're bringing their whole selves to the table. And it is magnetic. You are drawn to them. Um, and ultimately, I think that that's one of the things that, you know, I would I would give as, as advice. Um, but also, I, I'm not just giving you that advice. It also reminds me um, to to aspire to those same things. So we've kind of gone through three, three of the four things in lead. So listen, establish your, you know, listen to your gut, establish your support system. Um, authenticity. The final kind of, uh, you know, step of, of lead is dream big. Um, you know, I never thought in a million years when I started my career and I said I would talk about my career a little bit. I have been um, a technologist um, for 23 years. I started out, um, I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. So I started out in the Navy uh, straight out of high school. I was 18 years old. I joined the Navy as a um, what is now a legacy job. So it's no longer called this, but my job in the Navy was a radio man. Um, and it's something that I'm tremendously proud of um, to, to have retired my sparks now, uh, which was the, the symbol for the job that I had. Um, but ultimately a few years into my career in the Navy, they changed our name to information technology specialist. And that was just a, a sign of the times. Um, as a radio man, we were focused on communications, we were focused on technology, and, and as, as technology has moved forward, a lot of our communications are, are satellite-based, and so changed, uh, changed job, uh, kind of changed job names and became um, information technology speci specialist in the Navy, um, and I was on a ship. I was on the USS Rushmore and a couple of really pivotal things happened to me on the USS Rushmore. In addition to it being my my favorite command uh, that I was stationed at, um, I got to see some really great things happen on the Rushmore. One of the things that happened while I was on the Rushmore, I'd been there about two months. I, I joined the crew in 1999 and I had been there for about two months and um, we found out we were going to have a change of command. Now, I'm banking new to this. I hadn't even been in the military for a year yet. And we were going to have a change of command ceremony. And we started to prepare for that change of command ceremonies. 
And what I came to find out is that I was going to be a part of a historic change of command. That change of command was um, Admiral Michelle Howard was well, now Admiral at that time. She was, I think, a commander or lieutenant commander uh, was going to take command of, of our ship, USS Rushmore. And she was going to be the first African-American woman to command a combatant ship. And for me, at 19 years old, I just... I think a couple of things were happening. I was thinking about how phenomenal it was that I was gonna have a woman as my captain. I was very, very proud. But I also was thinking about this idea that I thought that that had already been a step that we had crossed over. And so it was the very beginnings of my career that I came to understand what the glass ceiling was and what shattering it looked like. And I got to be you know, a part of a historic shattering of a glass ceiling. Um, Admiral Howard went on to have a prolific career um, in the military and um, became a four-star admiral. And so I followed her career throughout that time. But when I say dream big, I mean, that was one of the, the biggest dreams that I could see come to fruition. Um, and of course, she would go on to do more greatness. But the other thing that happened at the USS Rushmore is that I understood the importance of really, really deep, strong technical acumen as I was a junior technologist at that point. One of the things that we got to do on board Rushmore is we installed the first uh, the first email system. And again, you're as a young person, sometimes you don't understand how phenomenal um, technology can change um, the way that that the world works and the way that business is done. But I think for me, looking back on it now, it didn't just change how we did business. It changed the morale of the sailors that I worked with. We went from waiting on mail from our families and you know trying to figure out when mail was gonna be delivered and was it coming by boat or by helicopter to being able to communicate with them every single day. And I came to understand very quickly that that was um, a special way in which technology enabled um, connectivity. And that is also, I think, when the the bug kind of bit me and I really had a, a, an understanding of the work that I was doing and how important it was not just for the Navy and not just for overall communications and support to all of the folks that we were supporting in air and ground and, um, and LCAPs and everywhere, um, but also what it was doing for the sailors who were able to read and send emails back and forth to their families every day. Um, so spent a few years on Rushmore, went on to a command called Navy and Marine Corps Interconnect Command where our job was focused on synergizing naval networks. And so we were working on um, Navy.mil, did that for a couple of years. And it was during my time at NMCI that I went um, on to talk about um, went on to work in a security operations center for the first time. And we were still dealing with the Y2K virus at that time. And so um, my job was to make sure that all of our printers were patched. And so we had like 20,000 printers. It was a it was an all day job. And eventually I went on to different parts of the security team and learned manhunt and learned threat intelligence. But that was my first job in a security operations center. And ultimately I stayed uh, in security, uh, well, obviously for the rest of my career. Um, from you know from the navy i spent nine years in the navy and then i joined lockheed Martin corporation and again a phenomenal place to be um, i was once again found myself in the throes of what um what technology looked like and how we were changing that technology and i worked on some really great programs at, at lockheed as well got to work on f-16 and f-35 joint strike fighter and um, c-130 and c-5 and really get to see how what i did as a security professional and at that time i was a risk and awareness lead and i also led a security engineering team that did um code scanning and secure code scanning for some of the the programs that we had there and um, I think one of the highlights of, of my time at Lockheed was getting to see Orion launch, having worked on it for, for many years with my, my team um, and getting to see it launch. It really represented a full circle moment for me as a professional because um, Orion launched from, from Florida and landed in the Pacific Ocean and California is my home. And I believe the USS Anchorage picked it up, which is also an amphibious assault ship, much like the Rushmore. And so to see that that tailgate open and, and pull Orion in, it was a full circle moment for me because it reminded me of my very humble beginnings, but also this pervasive thought of dream big, like never in my wildest dreams did I think that that would be 
something that I would get the chance to work on and it was happening and it came to fruition. Um, I, I spent nine years at Lockheed, nine seemed, nine seemed to be the, the magic number for me um, in the early phases of my year, so nine career, nine years at Lockheed, nine years in the Navy, and then I moved uh, my family even further north to join Nike. And during my time at Nike, I worked on, uh, I mean, a, a lot of projects, a lot of fun projects, um, worked with um, the Secure Code team, worked on business engagement with the international teams, lots and lots of fun there. Eventually I came home to Southern California to um, be the director of North America Technology. And this was a, a pivot in my career, but it was a bit of a planned pivot. During my time at Lockheed Martin, I understood that um, cybersecurity sometimes when we're trying to navigate our careers, there's not always an open spot for you. And so I decided that I would also learn how to be a, a senior leader in technology in the CIO space. And so I took a job as a chief of staff to a phenomenal CIO um, at Lockheed. She's a woman, um, still a really good friend of mine, and ultimately said, I think I would like to learn how to do this. And you, there's none better than you. And so I spent a couple of years working hand in hand uh, with her, understanding business rhythms and finance and learning all about how to be a CIO. And so after my time with Nike cybersecurity team, I became a director. North America Technology, um, and I was able to do that because I had picked up some skill sets that ultimately helped me to understand both spaces. And I very much believe that cybersecurity is not, you know, something that not anyone can get into it, but it's really helpful if you have, you know, a development background or if you have a background in technology, in general technology. Um, ultimately, cyber sits on top of those things. And so if you understand them, it makes transitioning into the work that we do pretty, pretty, you know, pretty seamless. And so I was able to transition to um, a role as a director of North America Technology, did that for a couple of years. Nike sold Hurley. My job uh, scope changed. I went from a director of North America Technology to a CIO and started working merger, merger acquisition support, in my case, a divestiture, and spent a year with a phenomenal company called United Lake Wear and Apparel as their CIO of West Coast, West Coast Operations. Um, and really, really enjoyed my time. During that time, um, during my time as a CIO, it was really interesting. It was like kind of taking a mirror and flipping it. I had been, you know, very much the the seller of security products. You know, it was my job in business engagement to make sure that there was proper implementation for our products. Ultimately, as a CIO, I was buying those products. And so I got this really interesting look at um, the cybersecurity industry from a customer perspective. And what I didn't realize at that point being a customer is that there was another, there were other things that were kind of brewing that would ultimately send me back into a CISO job and land me where I am today. Understanding that customer perspective added, I think, a really um, interesting um addition to to round out my career at one point i can remember my my career being called eclectic well now it's well-rounded um because i had gone from military to aerospace and defense to apparel um to now kind of um also retail but kind of back of house and so um it was really interesting being much more a customer of the products um and that ultimately led me back around to auth zero um which we're we're an identity as a service company and we're a developer centric product. And so I think one of the things that's really phenomenal about me now being a CISO again and being at Auth0 is that I have a much more well-rounded view of how to approach technology from both how do we secure our internal networks, but also how do we provide really great products that will help um, keep keep us secure and keep the people that we service secure. Um, and so I got this really, uh, really great perspective of that. And now as um, the CISO of Auth0, I'm responsible for the holistic approach to security. So when I say dream big, I mean dream bigger and, and farther than your eyes can see or than your heart can possibly imagine. Because over the course of 23 years, I, I never you know, dove into jobs because I think I wholly understood the job. I think um, one of the things that I, I did was I liked to be close to, to customers. I liked to be close to the business and really be curious about what the business was doing. And those kind of also drove me into the roles that I took. Um, 
but I also wasn't necessarily afraid to um, to ask for for what I wanted. I wasn't afraid to when they would ask me, well, what do you what do you you know what do you aspire to do? I would say, well, I would like your job, but I also would like to be the CEO of the company. And I think that kind of you know I I think that that was interesting for people because you know at, at various phases. I don't know that you, you know, I could always be honest about that, but there was a point where I really understood that um, I wanted to to be able to impact um, women in underserved communities and access to technology and the digital divide and representation in a way that I could only do if I continue to, to progress as a leader. And so that's what I did. I continued to progress as a leader and I continued to, you know, to try to move forward and uh, as a leader. And ultimately, um, my big dreams kind of came to fruition a couple of weeks ago when I was announced as the CISO of Boss Zero. And it is a dynamic team. Um, I hope that you will take some time to learn more about our company. I hope you'll take some time to learn more about the phenomenal work that we continue to do um, in the community and the stances that we really continue to take on humanity and the things that matter. Um, our team is here um, in the booth. They have been doing some great chats and really being candid about the company. There are some special guests there um, to, to meet you and to talk to you. And um, ultimately, I hope that, that you do, uh, that you find ways in which this community um, serves you as much as you provide service to it. So just a quick recap on uh, what I talked about with you over the last 30 minutes. I talked about um, this, this philosophy that I hold for myself um, under the letters LEAD, L-E-A-D, and that, that changes for me some, from time to time. Um, but today it means listen, establish, authenticity and dream big. Listen to your gut. Um, you know who you are. You know what you want. Listen to yourself first and first and foremost and always. And also, if you're going to try to save the world, make sure you save yourself first. Um, establish a support system. You know, your network really is your network, but not just a support system that's a network. Establish a support system of people who are going to help lift you up and guide you into your greatness. Um, Authenticity. You know, you only have one you and that's the best you that you can be. Show up every day as yourself. Um, the world is a better place when we we are our, our best selves and our real selves and our truest selves. But also you are, are better when you are your best self. And so be authentic, find your voice um, and then listen to your voice and, and shout from the rooftop tops. And finally, dream big, plan small, um, you know, you know, the journey of, a you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So take that first step, plan small, but dream big. And um, the world is, is out there and it's waiting for us to conquer it. And don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. Um, you can do anything that, that you want to do if you, if you stay dedicated and focused and true to yourself. I hope that um, these last couple of minutes, which went really flew by, I thought, oh, I have more time. Um, I hope that these last couple of minutes have provided you um, with some insight into what the world of a CISO looks like and what that journey looks like. But also, I hope that mo more important than anything that um, you see yourselves in me because I see myself in each of you um, and, I'm, and I'm inspired by you every single day. Ultimately, it is this phenomenal community of women um, that keep me going every day. Um, and I am inspired to read all of your comments and talk with you and interact with you. And so please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly or to the team at Auth0. Um, I'm sure that the other phenomenal women that I work with um, would love to tell you more about our amazing company. Um, and that's it for me. I hope that you guys have enjoyed spending some time with me um, and helping me share my philosophy with you.